<laughs> I just I don't see any building that's higher than me, you know. I'm on top of the world, like I'm on the tallest building in Singapore. Hey guys, a very good morning. Uh, we're walking along Maxwell Road today and we are going to be checking out Singapore's tallest building today, the Guaco Tower. Now, Wallet Residences is where we're heading to. We're going to be looking at the facilities, the units. Be sure to watch to the end. This is Wallet Residences. So I'm just under the Guaco Tower right now behind me. It's Wallach Residences, as you can see this is the entry point. It's 181 units from one bedroom to four bedroom units, penthouses as well. We're going to be checking out penthouse on the 60th floor, so don't go anywhere. This again is Wallach Residences. Okay, so I'm just in the lobby area right now. Uh, once you step in, you get this really nice, uh, tastefully designed concierge space. You also get some bell cards, uh, people to assist you with your bags. So overall, a very homely, nice feeling when you step into uh, the residence. Wallach Residences is about 160,000 square feet land size. I think. Compared to a lot of residences, especially of this size, you don't get a drop off point that is that big as opposed to this. So that's a huge uh, bonus for me. And so this place is so exclusive that you actually have grocery, luggage, and laundry handling uh, services. So in most cases, residents usually end on the 39th story. But over here, the Wallach residences start on the 39th story. So let's go check it out. We just got to the 39th floor, uh, it's where the facilities are, it's also called the Social 180. Uh, the reason for this is because it's 180 meters above sea level. We're going to check out the gym first, we're going to have a look at the views and then I'll bring you on to the rest of the facilities along the way. For a residence of just 181 units, the gym is actually really sizable. All the treadmills are positioned in the corner with the views of the entire bay area that's Pinnacle at Duxton again. So yeah, just very well put together. Alright, what do we have here? Relish 1. It's a common room that you can book. Once you come in, you see your dining table. It's already all very well laid out. You get some sofas to lounge. Preparation area here, so you have um, a wine chiller that's by Bosch. As you go deeper in, you also get your wet kitchen. You could even hire a chef to to cook something up. Unfortunately, it's not gas, uh, so it's electric cooking. You also get your fridge here by Bosch. Obviously, the views that you get while preparing the food. So far, wherever I've been, there's actually been someone cleaning. It's testament to the constant maintenance that goes on here. It's a price premium, definitely, that you're paying, but it's really good to know that these things are in place. So as you're walking on the 39th floor, you get all these pockets of spaces. It's very tastefully done, you get some water, plenty of greenery, and uh, it's also very windy. We're gonna check out the infinity pool right now, but so many things about it. <laughs> wow. Probably one of the best views I've ever seen in my entire life. So you get some very nice cabanas here and a little bit of sun coming in. Sun decks just by the pool. Overlooking that incredible view, Tandex submerged as well, <laughs> because why not? We're done with the 39th floor, we're gonna check out the 52nd floor right now. It's just got a whole lot windier. I noticed that this floor is actually a lot more businessy, a lot more meeting rooms, and uh, in fact, this is the first meeting room. Very nicely put together, um, and just again, nice views all around. You also get a library space. The vibe here is very different, it's a little bit more colourful. A little bit of uh, antiquities over here. A little theatreette. See, it's fully equipped with speakers. Wallach room for gourmet dining. So you get a very nice 12-seater uh, right here. You open that area, you also get some sitting spaces. Again, we're on the 52nd floor and views-wise, it just keeps getting better and better. Somewhere there is Sentosa. Somewhere over there is the Marina Barrage. It's only 16 minutes via uh, the MCE to Changi Airport, which is all the way down there. And if you're going to the west, you get highways as well. The AYE is just down there. And for those of you guys wondering who the architects actually are, uh, well, there's Skidmore, Owings and Merrill. Ch Changi Airport Terminal 3, the Burj Khalifa. 35 Hudson Bay as well uh, in New York. So very accomplished. This, by the way, is Ansang Hill. Um, it's all low-landed. So around the area, you get plenty of very interesting streets like uh, Duxton, you get uh, Ansang Hill. So really just so many amenities, dining options. The units actually don't have bomb shelters, 
mainly because your bomb shelter is actually here in the corridor. You know what, the staircase area is actually a bomb shelter of its own. You know, you're not paying for this additional areas. Alright, so we're on the 41st floor now. This is 4110. It's a three bedder and it's the biggest uh, three bedroom unit that they have. It comes in at about 1,700 square feet. It immediately opens up into the kitchen area. Right, so you get this entire open concept kitchen, you get your dining space, you get your living area as well. I'll show you around the kitchen first. It's an open concept kitchen, an island here, in a Reginox sink. So you have your coffee machine, all these uh, incredibly high end um, appliances. You get your electric cooker, you get your hob chiller over here for your wine, and <laughs> this massive concealed fridge again it's all gaga now so really wonderful you know if an appliance spoils you know who to call immediately and just in front of the kitchen you get this um, dining area it's nice because there's a specific portion set aside for your dining space again this is an id unit so it comes with interior design all fully done your living space so as you can see sofas down here uh, your tv point is in that corner full length glass windows throughout the entire space. Just a note about the living, calm dining area. Uh, it's very rectangular, so that's uh, in a sense you don't get much wasted space, which I think is incredibly important. You know, when you purchase a unit of uh, this price range, you want to be um, making sure that every single dollar works for you. Another point that I would like to add as well is, you can see that the windows, uh, they're awning windows, which means they open outward, right? So it, it's not side to side, it's not sliding. It's bottom up, uh, which provides enough ventilation. It just means that you can't completely, you know, open the windows all the way through. And in this corner here as well, just next to the living room, you get your balcony. But it's ample for some sitting, you know, um, small table there, and the views. And a little bit of a pocket sea view, if you will, in the corner. Your air vents are completely ducted in your living room. You also get these uh, state-of-the-art switches. Pretty cool, your blinds. Um, your living room lights, hallway, dining, kitchen. Just past the kitchen, you get a little bit of a corridor and into your guest bath. It's very thoughtful that they've made it a Jack and Jill. Right? So you get entrances on both sides. There doesn't seem to be a shower door or shower screen, so your toilet bowl is probably going to get wet if you're going to be showering in this area. But otherwise, you can see it's really premium quality. And then into the utilities area. In this corner, you get your washer come dryer. And um, this is an inbuilt bed. Going out from the utility room, you actually come onto the two common bedrooms. On the right, this is a smaller common bedroom. Fits a little bit of a sofa, a day bed and um, a study area. For the other common room, you get a queen size bed with ample uh, side table space, if you will. Some nice storage as well. And uh, what's really nice is that, again, you are linked straight to the toilet. It's a Jack and Jill. It's a very sizable bath, a rain shower, um, and this time a separate shower area of its own. Apart from the nice exhaust sanitary fittings that you have, you also get quite a bit of concealed storage space. On top of that, you also get drawer space at the bottom. Let me just... So yeah, plenty of space for two people to share a bathroom. And finally, the master bedroom. Quite a big space and really the thing that takes your breath away once you get in is the amount of storage space you have. Four panels of storage spaces, as you can see. Um, something that is usually lacking in most condo units. As for the actual master bedroom, this is a king size bed. Um, you get an L-shaped window panel layout, so plenty of sunlight coming in. There's plenty of leg room, you know, just enough for some chairs here. You get your balcony, so it's not the biggest of balconies, but man, again, the views, very lovely, very windy as well. And I think just to note as well, you get these uh, shelters on top, so it helps to prevent some uh, rain from coming in, it blocks out the sun as well. So that about wraps up uh, the three better. Again, this is 1,700 square feet. For those of you wondering about the price, of course it comes at the premium, it's uh, 5.308 million. So it's, it's very hefty, but again, for the location, for the fittings. Now we're gonna go check out the penthouse. Uh, it's the only uh, junior penthouse in this development. So it's gonna be quite interesting. All right, finally at the 60th floor. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> 
wow. So when you step into the unit for the first time, this is what greets you, this incredible view. And man, look at the length of this unit. And that's just half of it. Right at the start, you know, you get your private lift coming in. You get a powder room, which is always uh, very convenient. This is the only junior penthouse. Uh, it comes at about 3,700 square feet. The other super penthouse, which is uh, just above it, that's about uh, 21,000 square feet. On the left, when you walk into the unit, you get like the entire entertainment space, right? So you get your dining area, your kitchen, your living space. And then on the right side, you get your bedrooms. So we're going to start with the common areas. As you can see, this unit comes fully ID'd. Full length marble table with 12 seats. And of course, incredible views, just full length glass windows all the way down. Just behind the dining area, you get this um, open concept kitchen. This is your dry area of sorts. The electric stove here as well. And again, all the appliances are by Gaganel. You get your <laughs> massive two door fridge here. Feels very commercial. Wine chiller, coffee machine and plenty of storage spaces, which is always very important. I know some people who are not big fans of open concept kitchens, mainly because you get the smells, you know, the noise and... But the nice thing about this unit is you also get this interior uh, white kitchen, if you will. Not just electric this time, you also get your gas stove. And on top of that, you also get a grill here, which is super rare. Like I've never seen this uh, in a unit anywhere, ever. Massive Reginald sink here with your um, exo kitchen faucet, your ovens, a really nice storage here with internal dividers, pull out I believe. And uh, if that's not enough, you also get an additional fridge over here. Warmer as well, which again is very unique. And if my memory serves me correctly, there's a combi oven, so it's a combination of both a microwave and an oven. Uh, they're very expensive devices. So I'm just gonna check out the utility space. There's so much storage in this utility space alone. Here, your washer cum dryer is concealed. I don't think I've seen this much storage space in a utility room ever. So, very nice. In this corner, some of you might deem this the, the med's room, right? So you get a little bit of storage space here as well is nice. Um, the air conditioner is really fully fitted here. Unlike that three bedroom earlier that we saw, this has a separate uh, toilet or water closet. Finally, this is your public entrance. Uh, your delivery man can come in from here, whether it's food, delivery services. One thing as well about this uh, penthouse is you can see the effort that the developers have done to infuse technology. So web browser devices, chargers, really well um, equipped technology wise. Moving on to the dining room, feels like a separate unit of its own, very nicely, neatly furnished. This is interesting, right? So it's a sliding door that conceals your really, really big television screen. Sitting wise, you can easily fit about eight people here and then even more on that corner uh, and really just views all around lovely dining um, bar counter you also get your Le Beer wine chiller as well if the one previously was not enough just looking at this uh, really gives me that great Gatsby kind of feel mm. going into the buff even though this is just a guest buff you get a his and her sink water closet is also dissected Actually, it's Toto, right? Gibbo love this. <laughs> I'm a big fan. A big fan of Toto toilet. Your rain shower here. And also, actually, you get this electronic panel. It definitely looks pretty handy. Heading out of that area, let's uh, have a very quick look at the external spaces here. Again, we are on the 60th floor. This would be great in the evenings for, you know, a glass of wine. It really does feel like I'm on top of the world, like I'm on the tallest building in Singapore. For the CBD, the max building height I think is 280 meters, but Guaco Tower was given the permission to go up to 290 meters. <laughs> I just, I don't see any building that's higher than me, you know, just really at the top. We still have the common rooms to check out, so let's head over this way. So if you turn right upon coming in from the private lobby, this is the very first room you're going to enter. It's just a common room, but again, you know, it's an ensuite. You get your full length glass panels, queen size bed, your toilet here as well. A little study area here in the corner. Uh, 
uh, your AC ledge I believe is here so that's why you're getting this halved windows. To be honest, it's not really much of a big deal because you already have the views from either end. Coming out of that common bedroom, <laughs> you're greeted by this really long hallway. If this was a smaller unit, if it wasn't that vast a unit, I would probably say that this is a massive waste of space. But in this scenario, it just serves as a, I would say a privacy barrier. It helps to separate the dining entertainment areas from the bedrooms. This is your other ensuite storage spaces here it's l-shaped here in the corner you get your study area and some outdoor storage spaces coming out of that ensuite public entrance here so this links up to the common corridor now if you guys think that what you've just seen is amazing wait till you have a look at this master bedroom walking in you have two options <laughs> On the left, you get your entire master bedroom. For those of you who are keen-eyed, you might notice that there isn't actually any uh, storage space here. The reason for that is because you actually have a walk-in wardrobe right here. So on one end, it opens up this way. And on the other end, you get this row of shelving. It actually links up, uh, but via a sliding door into one of the biggest master buffs I've ever seen in my entire life. Get your total uh, toilet over there, his and hers sink. Massive bathtub, definitely the biggest I've seen. And right here you have the other entrance from the master bath into the master bedroom. Massive bed right here with table lamps on the other side. And a day bed which again shows how much leg room you actually have in this space here. Storage area, platform. It's been very tastefully designed. This, I believe, could fit a television screen if you so wished. I'm not gonna lie, uh, it's been a really, really long tour. You know, I'm incredibly tired. This unit was massive and the unit before and the facilities as well. Um, but just before we conclude, I think if uh, for those of you guys interested in the price, this is going upwards of $18 million. We're gonna head up right now to the highest floor. Uh, I believe that's on the 62nd. Uh, and we're going to conclude right there. Alright guys, we finally made it to the 60, uh, 60, Alright guys, we finally made it to the 62nd floor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now I'm just gonna share a little bit more about the unit mix. You get one to four bedroom units here and the penthouses. Uh, for the one bedrooms, they're slightly larger than usual, so about 600 over square feet. Uh, for the two bedrooms, they go from about 800 to 1,200. And for the three bedders, from about 1,000 to 1,700. Uh, four bedders are about 1,600 to 2,000 square feet. Uh, the penthouse that we were at is uh, 3,700 square feet, and that massive super penthouse, which has now been bought over for over 60 something million dollars, is 21,000 square feet. I'm just going to share a couple of pros and cons uh, that I feel personally uh, about the place. I'll begin with the cons. Although it's a very private residence, once you get to the lobby, once you step out of the development, uh, you are in a sea of people. It's an entire throng of uh, office workers, there's commercial spaces. So not really incredibly private in that sense. The second con would be that it's a 99 year leasehold after all. At some point, the lease decay is going to kick in. It's incredibly convenient. Tanjung Paga MRT downstairs, you're actually in the CBD, a uh, ton of commercial spaces as well. Facilities are really well put together on the 39th and the 52nd floor and regarding the quality of units you've seen earlier, uh, it's really well put together. Well as always guys, uh, thank you so much for joining me, that about wraps up the video for today. If you liked what you saw, please uh, feel free to leave a like below, uh, comment, subscribe and we'll see you guys in the next one.